square roots and cube roots together. So here's some practice where we're looking at the square root and cube root together. Let's, in this problem, use the numbers shown to make the equations true. And each number can only be used once. So we can click and drag these numbers so that A is talking about the square root of something equals something, and then B is talking about the cube root of something equals something. And again, we want the equation to be true. So you can play around with the numbers and think about maybe taking the square root, see if we have any perfect squares, see if we have any perfect cubes, and then see if what they would equal if those answers are there as well. Keeping in mind, again, you can only use each number once. So one combination is to use the 110 with the square root. We know the square root of 100 equals 10 because 10 squared equals 100. And we can use 64 and 4 with the cube root. The cube root of 64 equals 4 because we know 4 cubed equals 64. So that is one combination that will work. Another combination is using the number 64 and 8 with the square root. We would have the square root of 64 is 8 because 8 squared equals 64. And we can use the 1,000 and 10 with the cube root. We can have the cube root of 1,000 equals 10 because 10 cubed equals 1,000. So that's another combination that can be used. In this problem, now let's complete the Venn diagram to classify the numbers as perfect squares and perfect cubes, or if they happen to be both, we can put them in the middle of our two circles. So what we need to do is we need to identify if these whole numbers are perfect squares or perfect cubes. I think a good idea is to go through each number and first see if it's a perfect square. See if some number squared equals that number. Then we can go through each number and see which ones are perfect cubed. Cubes, see if some number cubed equals that number, and then it can go in this circle. And then we can look at the numbers and we can see, well, which one could we answer yes for both? And that number would go, those numbers or that number, maybe none, well, we don't know yet, would go in the middle. So for example, I'll just model this with one number with, let's start out with 361. So we're asking, first, is it a perfect square? Does some number squared equal 361? And playing around, thinking around, maybe using a calculator to help us thinking of our numbers, we do get that the answer is 19. 19 squared equals 361, so 19 is a perfect square. Now go through and see, is something cubed equal to 361? Is some number multiplied by itself three times equal to 361? And you should say and find, no, there isn't one number. So that means that 361 is a perfect square, but not a perfect cube. So we'll do this for each of our numbers. You do that with 96, 256, 200, 1, 125, 333, and 64. Just ask first, is it a perfect square? And then if it's a perfect cubed. And we can go down and classify each of our numbers. So we already knew 361 was a perfect square. That's because that would be 19 squared. We also have that 256 is a perfect square because that's 16 squared. And those are only perfect squares. They're not perfect cubes. There's no number to the third power that would equal 256 or 361. Then we found out that 125 is a perfect cube because that is 5 cubed. 5 to the third, 5 times 5 times 5 is equal to 125, but it's not a perfect square because no number squared, no number to the second is 125. We found out 96, 200, and 333 are neither perfect squares or perfect cubes. They do not have any number to the second or third that has that as a product. But then we have 1, which is 1 squared and also 1 to the third, or 1 cubed. 
So 1 is a perfect square and a perfect cubed. And then 64 is a perfect square because 64 is 8 squared. But 64 is a perfect cube because it's 4 cubed. So you can see different numbers can be different things. They can be perfect squares or perfect cubes, or they could be both, or they could be neither. Now let's look at perfect squares and perfect cubes and square roots and cube roots with equations. So here we have four different equations and we're asked to solve, which means in all four equations we're trying to isolate x. So we have x squared divided by 4 equals 25. 6 times x squared equals 384. x squared divided by 27 equals 3. And 12x squared equals 588. In all four of these equations, there is in common that x is being squared. We have x squared, x squared, x squared, x squared. So we're going to have to use the square root inverse operation to undo that squaring. Now, all four of these equations also have in common that they're not just x squared equals a number. They have some other operation or some other number with it, so we're not quite at that step yet. We have to undo something first. In the first equation, we have to multiply both sides by 4 and get that x squared equals 100. Then we can take the square root of both sides. In the second equation, we have to divide both sides by 6 first to get that x squared equals 64 first before we can take the square root of both sides. In the third equation, we have to multiply both sides by 27 first before we can take the square root so that we get that x squared equals 81. And then that last equation, we because then we can take the square root, and then the last equation, we have to divide both sides by 12 first and get that x squared equals 49 before we can take the square root, before we can get our answers. So then we're taking that square root, that principal square root, or actually we would have both signs because we don't have enough information about the problem to know if it's the principal square root or the negative square root. So we're going to take both in this case and get that x equals plus or minus 10. That was from the square root of 100 x equals plus or minus 8, that was from the square root of 64. x equals plus or minus 9, that was from the square root of 81. And x equals plus or minus 7 from the square root of 49. So all four of these equations, in order to solve, you had to first isolate x squared and then take the square root. Now let's take a look at these four equations. And they're extremely similar to the ones we just were solving, except now these four equations are dealing with x cubed. We have x cubed divided by 2 equals 8. 11x cubed equals 11. x cubed divided by 8 equals 8. Or 6x cubed equals 750. So we're going to have to use the cube root inverse operation to solve these four equations. But before we can do that, our equation has to be in the form of x cubed equals a number, and all four of these have something with the x cubed, so we can't do that right away. For example, the first equation, we have to multiply both sides by 2 first to get x cubed equals 8, and then we can take the cube root of both sides. We have to divide both sides by 11 in the second equation to get x cubed equals 1 to then take the cube root of both sides. We have to multiply in the third equation both sides by 8 to get that x cubed equals 64 in order to then take the cube root of both sides. And then we have to divide both sides of that fourth equation by 6 to get that x cubed equals 125, and then we can take that cube root. Again, we had to undo that first operation or whatever was with x cubed. We had to do that inverse operation first, and then we took the cube root to get our answer. The cube root of 8 gives us that x equals 2. The cube root of 1 gives us that x equals 1. The cube root of 64 gives us that x equals 4. 
and the cube root of 125 gives us that x equals 5. And again, these were all positive cube roots. We were finding the cube root of a positive number, so x is positive in this case. We didn't have to worry about thinking about the signs. Is it positive, negative, because the sign carries over or follows through with a cube root. So we knew from these Again, you're taking the cube root of positive 8, positive 1, positive 64, positive 125. So our four solutions were also positive as well. So just a little difference between square roots and cube roots that you do have to follow and look out for when solving equations.